What's going on, y'all? So What's going on, y'all? So we are back again for another episode review of the Oval. Uh, season 3, episode 16, The Hornet's Nest. So we pick up where we left off last week with uh, Hunter coming up in there. You know, um, talking to Kareem. Okay, Kareem is up in the back of this van. You know, he took the, the scarf off, or I should say the little hood off him. And he was like, yo, so what you was doing? Okay, what you was doing? Baby, did y'all notice the way that they had um, Hunter talking? <laughs> I said, what the fuck is going on? All right. My man Cole switched like it wasn't nothing. I said, um, excuse me, I, I'm not feeling this, but all right. You know, it was just funny to me because he was like, so, uh, what did you say? You the one that wanted to see me? Okay. He was like, I mean, no, not really. It was like, but you was talking to your girl, huh? I mean, no. What did she tell you? She ain't tell me nothing, but you went on ahead to the police, right? You went on ahead to the police, right? I mean, no, no. You you had something to say, right? No, I didn't. I didn't. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, this is where shit starts. To, this is where it took a turn, okay? It went from being the way Hunter normally speaks to all of a sudden Hunter said, so, um, you think I'm a punk-ass bitch, huh? You think I'm some type of punk-ass bitch? I said, wait the fuck. <laughs> Huh? You think you could punk me out? I said, uh-uh, no, Hunter, what you doing? Hunter got gutter with it for a second. I said, excuse me, sir, is that supposed to be intimidating? You intimidating him enough. You trying to come down to his black level. I said, what is going on? <laughs> Baby, Hunter was trying to uh, scare the fuck out of Kareem, okay? That's all that was going on. You know, when he said that, uh, you think I'm a punk-ass bitch? I mean, your wife does, okay? So, I mean, I'm pretty sure somebody else do too. But basically, you know, um, get Kareem up there talking to him and trying to, you know, be like, yeah, I know that you got a lot of stuff going on and I know how hard it could be to be the president. Oh, you know how hard it could be? You know how hard it could be? How you know how hard it could be? I said, um, Hunter, quit playing games with this man, okay? Now, you already know you're not about to let him go. You're not about to let him go. And he basically told him that. Because here go Kareem. I don't know why. Every time people get caught up in something, all of a sudden is, I got a kid. I got a family. I got this. The motherfuckers got, I'm not that to tell you, your, uh, your captors and the people that's coming after you, they got family and kids too. They don't care, okay? They got a job to do. Meanwhile, um, <clears throat> you know, he was like, listen, I'm finna show you how powerful I am. Because at one point, it looked like he was gonna let him go. But he was like, listen, you know, at this point, hmm, Hunter tired of people just doubting him, okay, and trying to play him for a sucker. I said, that's how you acting, you know, so now it's all, I'm about to show you how powerful I am. I said, all right, Hunter, do what you gotta do, boo-boo. Meanwhile, um, he up there talking to old boy like the uh the uh secret agent that let Jason jump off the roof. He was like, So you got him down here? Yes, sir. Oh, okay, so you really got him down here and ain't nobody see? Yes, sir. So you can get me down here with nobody seeing. I said yes. Yes. He got him down there. Undercover. Nobody saw. We don't need to ask it again. But at this point, um, we get him going back to the hospital. Well, let me just go. Let me go in order, okay? Sam is waking up over there at uh, Nancy and Rich's place. Girl, you know, Nancy about to give him some breakfast. She was like, you got some buttermilk biscuits? Now, when he, when she said buttermilk biscuits, I do not know if y'all saw My 600-pound Life. Y'all know I love that show. Okay, listen. That is the one show where I can feel like I could talk about, you know... And it is so crazy that we do this, okay? Because me and my sister, my sister a little chunky too. My little, not my, the middle sister, okay? The second sister, not the youngest one. She chunky too, but she still, she small, she way smaller than the rest of us, okay? But my other sister, I'm bigger than her, but you know, she a little chunk, chunk monk too. But we talking about each other, okay? We, we would call each other all type of fat bitches, you know what I'm saying? So when I be looking at my 600 pound life, I be like, look at this fat bitch. I'm here just complaining and doing all this stuff. I don't know what that is. 
you know, when fat people talk about fat people, it's, I don't, I don't know what it is, but it's like, well, at least I'm not as big as you, but you know, and it's more so for me. I don't know how we got on this, but it's more so for me because I know somebody probably gonna be like, that's fucked up, but more so it's because of their attitude. Now, if y'all saw the last episode, oh my God, the last episode made me so goddamn mad. That bitch was lying and everything. I just, ugh, anyway. But two episodes ago, the black guy that was on there, and he was getting that Popeye's, and he was eating that Popeye's, and the, the clip probably been going around Twitter, and he was like, buttermilk biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I was thinking about when Nancy said, I got some buttermilk biscuits. But uh, Sam was up there talking to her. She was like, you know, I know everything that's going on between you and Priscilla. It's kind of messed up. But you, you play the part in it. Now, I just want you to know, you know, if somebody really got love for you, she's not going to carry all that hate up in her heart. She's going to forgive you once and, and she's going to forgive you soon. And I'm just sitting here like, okay, Nancy. She was like, listen, I've been here. I've been there. And he was like, you know, I don't want to. She said, it's cool. It's cool. I know Richard told you what was going on and everything. And I'm just like, oh, all right. Can we just hold people fully accountable and stop babying and coddling them? I understand that y'all friends or whatever, but put that hammer down. They'll be like, now you know you fucked up, right? You know you. Why the fuck would you do that? Okay? And then Priscilla just so happened to come up in there, and she sees Sam, and he was like, you know what? Let me go ahead and get to work. And so, um, you know, I was like, Priscilla, I don't know why you surprised that he came here to their place. That's uh, Richard and them. They're like besties or whatever at this point. You know, so uh, later they sitting at the table and, you know, she asking her if she going to work and she like, yeah, I'm going to work. What else I'm going to do? I can't stay up in the house and, 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 and look at all these memories or whatever of us in this goddamn house. It's going to make me go crazy. She was like, but the girl is dead at work. She was like, yeah, but at this point I have to work because if I'm going to be separated from him and get a divorce from him, I got to take care of myself. So therefore I got to get this money up. And that's what I'm holding. I'm thinking like, why they keep on saying, baby, are you going to work? Are you going to work? Because then Richard comes up in there asking her the same thing. It was like, where you finna go? She was like, I'm about to go to work. Oh, you going to work? Yeah, bitch, I'm going to work just like you and him. I'm finna go to work too just to check up on her. I'm sitting here like, y'all really playing this lady like she real stable. I mean, unstable. Yes, I get it. But y'all really think that Priscilla is going to be stupid enough to break her cover and to do something really, really dumb? And it's the fact that they keep on coddling him, Sam, but Chad keep on looking at her like she's just this so fragile type of person. Like, no, treat her like a regular human being at this point. You know what I'm saying? So she can get over it. Meanwhile, you know, Hunter uh, went back to the hospital. Well, he went back up into the hospital and, you know, um, Donna was trying to tell him, listen, so I think it's time for you to go back to the uh, White House. He was like, okay, cool. I'm going to go change my clothes. And he was like, uh, is it because you don't want me to be up here with these nurses? And I'm sitting here like, damn. Okay, like, come on, Hunter. Jesus, give your dick a rest. All right, give it a rest. And I'm pretty sure Hunter looked like the type of person that probably be playing with it each and every time he can get a chance to. Okay, like, shit, that thing should be broken by now. All right? Man, it just don't. Un I just don't understand it. He was like, you know, you got a problem with me doing. Uh, it it's such a problem with me. Um, you know, liking women, right? And it was like, ain't no problem with you doing that. It's just that you come off very predatory. You're using your power. You're using your um, you know, your whole situation because of what you are to go ahead and prey upon these women and make it seem as though they can't say no. That's rapist tease. Okay, that is what a does. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, you know what? Whatever, Hunter. Meanwhile, you got Lily sitting up in here in the hotel room. Lily is pissed, okay? Now, Lily, I get it. How long are we going to be sitting right here like this, okay? Now, I want you to do something, okay? Don't don't, don't talk about it. Be about it. Beyonce said, be about that action. I don't know who wrote that for her, but that's what she said. So, uh, my girl be getting stray bullets from me every freaking time. Every freaking time. I know people be watching like, damn, bitch, do you I love her. I mean, I'm just saying, you know, it's funny. It's funny. I got to I gotta chill. I got to chill, okay? She ain't deserve that. She ain't deserve that. Mama got Oscar nominated. 
and she wrote the song, bitch. Her and another person, she wrote the song. It was only two songwriters. My bitch getting Oscar nominated. Anyway, fuck all of that. That's not it, okay? That's not what we here for. Lily girl, you know, you sitting there, and she just like, I'm pissed the fuck off, okay? I'm pissed off. I, I, I need to do something. Donald, I'm finna give him a divorce. I said, now, bitch, hold on, Lily. Now, you said that as if it's going to be like we're talking about a regular person, a regular, degular, non-crazy person. Your husband is psychotic, okay? Even though, like, he's psychotic to the point that he will keep you up into this relationship for appearances. Even if you probably in the bed, probably tied down or riding away in somebody's attic. Like, he'll do that. He'll do that. So, you really going to throw this thing out here about a divorce? Okay, cool. You know, he was like, um... He go a phone, you can call the lawyer, whatever. It's encrypted and all this stuff, and you know, telling her how to use it. Max was like, You really gonna let her um do that? You know, she ain't finna uh, call him, uh, call the lawyer. She finna call him. It was like, I already know that, okay? But I'm pretty sure she gonna call the lawyer afterwards. It is what it is, all right? Max is over them because he was like, Y'all argue and y'all talk just like a fucking married couple already. Like, how long y'all been together? Y'all been together, they act like they've been together for 30 years and they only been together for 30 days, okay? That's what it is with them. But Lily gets on that phone and she calls Donald. Donald was coming out of the shower, all right? Because he did say he was going home to change his clothes and he'll meet him back at, uh, uh, Hunter back at the White House. So while he up in there, Lily and him going back and forth and Lily just like, listen, bitch. I'm coming for that ass. Because I'm sitting here like Lily. When she said that she wanted the divorce, I said, no, Lily. No, Lily, this is Donald that we're talking about, um, and he can cover up stuff. He can make stuff happen or whatever. You're going to have to take him out, okay? That's how it's going to happen. Ain't no divorce, ain't no paper, ain't no restraining order, ain't nothing like that that's going to stop him from getting away from you. You're going to have to take that man out, okay? Because he loves the game, all right? It's all a freaking game to him. And the way that he was talking on that phone and his little creepy-ass smile that he be having, I said, oh, yes, he's about to have fun with this because she telling him, listen... I'm about to send you the papers for the divorce. He was like, okay, cool. But just to let you know, I'm coming for that ass. I said, what? And he was like, what you been up there doing? She said, you want to know what I've been doing? I've been getting fucked like the, I've never been fucked before. I said, oh, Donald felt some type of way. He was like, oh, 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 really? Oh, oh, really? So you the one doing the bending? No, let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. I said, Donna, why you up in your feelings, okay? Because that ain't what you want. You don't want that. You want sausage, okay? You want butt. You know what I'm saying? You don't want vagina. So what's going on? Why you feeling some type of way, okay? Baby, he said, oh, you getting fucked by the same man that I fucked? I said, hold up. Now, excuse the fuck out of me. Now, bitch, I wouldn't mind it. But what you're not going to do is you're not going to disrespect him, just try to get back in him um, to, at, at Lily, Okay? Now, now and, and it made me go back to the way Cal was acting when we first met Bobby and Cal together. I said, did them two have something going on, too? Because they was acting, well, Cal was acting like he took his booty, too. And I said, excuse me? Or at least had Bobby, like, this can be deceiving. Donald Duke look like he's the strict top in the situation with Kyle, Okay. But if anything was going on with Bobby and Donald, I feel as though Bobby would be topping Donald. But then again, I didn't see bottoms that look like Bobby. So it can go either fucking way. And she was like, girl, ain't nobody got time for this. He said, oh, you don't believe it? You don't believe pictures? You don't believe receipts or whatever? She was like, listen, let me just tell you this. I'm getting a divorce and I'm coming for that ass. <laughs> you better be aware. I said, all right. You know, he asked him. You know, do Cal, is Cal over there with you? She gonna lie and say yes. Put him on the phone. Uh, I can't because he thirsty. I said, oh, I like that. You know, because of the water boarded and all that stuff. Okay, cute. That was a cute little jab. That was a cute little jab. You know, of course, Donald felt some type of way. And speaking of Cal, Sam then came downstairs because, you know, Richard was up there talking to Sam about this whole situation with Cal being down there or whatever. And he was like, you know, the, you, you ain't gonna be able to keep him down there. Okay. It was like, listen, at this point, I'm going to have to do what I have to do. He was like, you know, he's going to come after your family and everything. He said, I bet he he, he might try to come after me, but it, it, I, I got this handled. So he go down there. Baby, I said, is it air conditioner down there? I mean, I understand torture and everything, but is the air conditioner down there? Because Cal said he been down there for 18 hours and that man is drenched. I said, ain't no air down there. Damn, they trying to kill your ass for real. And he basically like, listen. You got to get me up out of here. It's been 18 hours since I called um, um, Donald, and I'm pretty sure he going crazy trying to find out where I'm at, okay? And you need to do that. I'm sitting here like, Kyle, 
10 hours ago, it didn't work. 15 hours ago, it didn't work. 18 hours ago, it didn't work, okay? So, we're not scared of Donald at this point. Sam is trained, okay? And then I'm sitting here looking at Sam like, Sam, it's been 18 hours. He's not about to tell you what's going on. Cal is so conditioned and Cal is so loyal. He is not about to break. He is not that agent that's going to easily break and tell you everything that's going on. All right. So you can keep on playing with him and y'all can keep playing this game. You know, all these little threats. I'm going to come after your family. I'm going to do this. Bitch, at one point, Cal didn't got him so pissed off that Sam was up there like, you motherfucker. I said, oh, you cursing? You done broke character, Sam. It wasn't no, no, sir, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. It wasn't none of that. I said, oh, all right. Meanwhile, you know, Sam walked out of there and Cal's still going crazy, okay? Hunter then came back to the White House. He up in the room with Victoria and um, she was like, oh, so you back? What, because they changed the nurses? He was like, oh, so what you trying to say? You got them to change the nurses to old, old bitches or whatever? I said, what? <laughs> Victoria. And I even had to say that shit too because he was like, what, you a little jealous? Is that what it is? And I was sitting here like, well, shit, Victoria. You know, he said, you know, he asking the questions that I'm asking too. You don't, you claim you don't give a damn about this man, but yet you be trying to cock block and everything. And I just don't understand. And I keep on saying this. You do, you let him do him at this point. There is no love and y'all come together for the image. That's it. All right. But you know, on the one hand, he can get himself in trouble. So I can understand why she do some of the stuff that she do when it comes to the women that he be with, because he's sloppy with that shit. All right. Leaving the panties there. You know, the whole situation that happened with Denise and all that stuff. They probably are still be in the shit if it wasn't for her, you know? And so, um, she was like, well, fuck all of that. We got to get a hold of this, uh, vice, uh, vice president situation. Okay. He was like, fuck him. I don't care. All right. It, it ain't nothing. I was like, yeah, it is something we need to talk about. Mind you, he brought up the whole situation with Ellie. Yeah, you know that she had something to do with it. She could deny, 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 but you know, she had something to do with it. And so after they get through talking, she gets on the phone with the VP uh wife, okay? Now, listen, I don't know her name yet. I probably mentioned it, and I just forget. Second lady. We just going to call her second lady, okay? I like her. I like her. Actually, I like anybody that can stand up to Victoria and just not really easily crumble at her feet. Mama is giving her a run for her money, okay? Because Mama was like, bitch, what you want? <laughs> she was like, girl, you're going to have to come up here to the White House because we're about to have lunch. She was like, listen, no, I am not. She was like, yes, the fuck you are. She was like, no, bitch, I got shit to do, so what? Okay, you could hang up the phone. I ain't, gonna, I ain't doing this. She said, listen, you're going to come up here and have lunch with us um, unless, you know, it's going to get out there, your little secrets that you got done. Because we did the vetting on y'all asses. And I know y'all got secrets and everything. And she was like, girl, we ain't got nothing underneath our belt. Okay, so whatever it is that you're trying to scare us with, it's not going to work. She said, oh, you think so? Your nosy ass going to come up here just because you nosy. So you going to bring your ass up here. Click. Meanwhile, here come the VP. Hey. What's going on? He is dumb to me. I'm sorry. He just gives off like... I don't want to say weak, but he's just not as aggressive. He's just not as, ooh, as I need him to be. His wife got more oof than him, okay? Like, she running this stuff. What is it about that women are running this shit, okay? And I was like, I ain't mad at it, you know? And, and, and he was even trying to tell her, I don't think you should go up there to the uh, to the lunch. She was like, I, I kind of want to know what's going on. I said, well, you just proved Victoria right. You a nosy bitch, okay? It's understandable because, bitch, I would have wanted to know too. But then again, this probably would give her some time to play with the bitch, okay? And I like that, you know? Let's trade bars. Um, um, and let, let, let me let you know that I, I'm not fucking scared of you, okay? I'm up here on my own free will just because I got some shit to say say to your face all right um and i was just like oh, okay cool 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 we gonna do that meanwhile um back over at the ranch uh i should say over there with uh kareem not kareem but dale and sharon sharon she up here asking dale because uh she he was sleeping on the couch and this is um i guess the next day kareem ain't came home yet she was like why you let me sleep this late okay Basically, Kareem ain't come home yet, and they thinking that he might be at the pharmacy. She was like, I hope he didn't go to the cops. I hope he's not dumb enough to go to the cops or whatever, because at this point, we already know that he, they got people everywhere, okay? And I said, you know, your man's stupid enough to go to the cops because that's exactly what he did. So they went over there to, um, you know, talking about going to the pharmacy or whatever. Sharon got on my nerves at this one particular point when she was like, damn, 
fucking around with Barry. All this shit has been happening ever since. Ain't nothing good been happening ever since I got with Barry. I said, excuse the fuck out of me. Now, this shit happened when you was with Kareem. Why are we bringing Barry in this? Okay, what this got to do with Bird? Bird ain't had nothing to do with this situation, okay? You going around getting... Mm, no, it ain't had... What did it? I mean... Well, let me take that back. Let me take that back because if it wasn't for the fact that Bird's daughter got taken and then Richard needed some information on... But truth be told, Sharon, you decided to come up there with yourself. Or did Richard tell you to come up there with Dale? Because you said that Dale was the one that had some information on the whole uh, Rekaduchis, okay? And he wanted him to come up there to the... Um, he wanted... Listen... The people of Kings of Napa, I love y'all, okay? I know y'all not watching this review, but y'all, they be showing me so much love ever since I started doing the review. <laughs> anyway, um, moving on, moving on. But what was I saying? Now, had Sharon stay her ass at home and just let Dale come up there to talk to Richard on, her, on, on his own, you know, she wouldn't be in this. She would never cross paths with the president, okay? And all of this stuff wouldn't happen. But if you want to be technical... You know, she did this because of it. Okay, I, I guess. I guess, Sharon, we'll get that to you about a technicality. A technicality. You know what I'm saying? We'll let you go with that. You know, and I was just like, but I still felt some type of way about you saying that. You know what I'm saying? Um, You should never tell Kareem what was going on because you should know that he's so freaking headstrong or whatever. And he want to super save a whole bitch all the damn time. But meanwhile, <clears throat> after all of that, we get Alan. He up in his apartment, and it looked like he finally tried to clean that bitch up because he just not picking up the chair that was got knocked over days ago. And Donald show up. And um, I was like, so we making house calls on our employees like this? I didn't know you cared that much. And so Alan was like, what's good? He was like, listen, I know you're going through some stuff, but you need to get up to the office because I've been, listen, work or whatever. He was like, listen, I'm so glad that you actually came and check up on me. He was like, don't tell nobody this. Don't tell nobody this. But you one of my favorite employees, okay? Don't say nothing to nobody. And I was like, all right. Now, see, earlier, it, it, this scene kind of took me back to when um, Donald was flirting with Alan. And he caught Alan trying to flirt with him. And it not necessarily because Alan wanted to fuck him, but because he was trying to, you know, set it up or something or whatever. And that's what I felt what was going on at first with this situation. Because he's all of a sudden was just being so nice to Donald. He was like, listen... Yo, I'm just trying to tell you, like, I appreciate you or whatever. I respect the hell out of you. I love you and everything. And you just, you just, you just, you remind me of my daddy. Okay. I want you to be my daddy. I said, now, do you want him to be your daddy or do you want him to be your daddy? Okay. I said, what is going on? What is going on? I, I said, Alan, you're doing too much. You're doing too much. He was like, you know, I, I, I love working with you. I've been feeling this way for a long time. You know what I'm saying? And if you need me to do anything, like you need me to go into the residence, I can do that. You need me to go up there to the president. I can do that. He was like, you want to work closer to the president? He was like, yeah. And he was like, after all this stuff that happened, this is what you want to do. He said, yeah. He was like, oh, okay, cool. So you go get your ass dressed and bring your ass on back to the, uh, uh, to the job. He was like, okay, got you, got you. And uh, when he left, Donna was like, with your sneaky ass, slick sneaky ass. I said, I know, right? He was just so obvious that he is out here planning and he's up to something. Meanwhile, you know, um, Sam did go meet up with the VP to see what was going on. That was, uh, but anyway, Alan gets back up there to the White House. He going through security. Alonzo is there, asking if he okay. It's good to see you at work or whatever. How you doing? He was like, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, well, you sure you came here? Uh, why was you here the other night? Okay. He was like, because I had to work, you know, and I can't tell you what it is that I was working on. You know what the deal is. He was like, did you bring anything with you? Why would I bring something with me? Why would you even ask me that? He was like, it's on cameras if you did. He was like, well, run the tape back. Okay. And I said, oh, all right. You know, of course. He was like, uh, I already did. And I said, so what game are we playing here, sir? And he just let him go. I said, you know what, Alonzo, you're, you're kind of getting on my nerves a little bit, just a little bit, because, hmm, I don't know. But meanwhile, you got Sam on the phone with Max. Max sitting up in the truck because he was literally waiting on um, Sam to put Cal, hand Cal off to him. And I'm sitting here like, Max, Sam is about a book guy, okay? He literally just got through asking the pre uh the VP how long we can keep um you know old boy down there 
and you mean to tell me you really think that this man is going to um go ahead and let him go to you? No, it's not going to happen, all right? I just want you to chill out on that, okay? And that's for the best for you and for him. Meanwhile, uh, Sharon and Dale get back to the pharmacy, and they notice that Kareem ain't never been up in there. And um, while they were just checking things out, all of a sudden, they heard this noise. They was like, oh, my God, who's that? Who's that? Baby, who come walking around the corner? Hunter ass. I said, you know what? With the creepiest, most predatory ass grin on his face. I said, Ugh. Hunter, Hunter, Hunter. That man disgusts me so much, but that was the oval. You guys tell me how y'all felt about this episode, and I will see you guys later. Peace.